Just by a show of hands, how many of us are having a bad day? Or just a bad week in general? Okay, a couple people in the back. Now, keep those hands raised if you think that whatever happened to you was out of your control. Okay, we've got some couple people. Last week, I had speech and debate national qualifiers. Everything went well, I qualified, but as I was coming back home, I realized that I was a bit sick. I felt that I had a sore throat. I was upset. No, I was furious. My friends at the tournament had gotten me sick. I mean, they should have, shouldn't have hung out with me if they were feeling ill, right? They should have warned me at the least. Or was it my fault that I hung out with them? I wasn't proactive enough to know that I couldn't get sick. I couldn't have a sore throat because I had to give this speech in a week. Was it my fault that I didn't take any Claritin or Dayquil? In fact, I didn't take any medicine until 12 hours after I had seen any symptoms. Who's to blame? My friends? Or me? And that's my concern. Too often in our lives, we blame externalities. God, fate, chance, luck. We've created our own bubbles or boxes. We've been wired to think outside of the box. So when something goes wrong, we step outside and look at everything that we can blame. But it's time that we stayed inside the box and started blaming ourselves. Ironically, the outside of the box mindset is the one that's the most introspective. In psychology, the battle between who or what to blame is known as the battle between internal and external locus of control. Julian Rotter, one of the most influential behaviorists in psychology, proposed that individuals differ a great deal in where we put blame, where we put our responsibilities for what happens after our actions. He coined the two terms, detailing that People that place responsibility in outside things, luck, chance, the government, powerful others, have an external locus of control. Whereas individuals that have an internal locus of control believe that our own choices and our own personalities affect our consequences. Locus meaning location. In order to understand why someone would have an internal or external locus of control, Rotter needed to first establish that individuals do have a tendency for one or the other. So he created what he called the IE scale. I for internal and E for external. He had a series of 60 statements, which he streamlined to just 23, including statements such as, many of the unhappy things that happen during people's lives are partly due to bad luck. To there is no such thing as luck. Now that you and I know what he's testing, it's quite obvious what answer we would choose. This is why he had six filler statements, so that the participants couldn't alter their answers and he could mask the true intent of the study. These statements included, certain people are just no good in life. What makes his study so unique and reliable, unlike those pesky BuzzFeed quizzes, is that the participants could only choose between one or the other. They couldn't choose neither of the statements, and they couldn't choose both of the statements. They were forced to pick between an internal locus of control and an external locus of control. Rotter was able to predict people's behaviors in certain situations, ranging from gambling to political activism, to persuasion, to achievement motivation, to even conformity. And, and he had strikingly high correlations. We'll delve into gambling and achievement motivation since they're the most interesting. Rotter found that individuals that had an internal locus of control tended to bet on sure things, moderate odds over riskier, higher bets. They'd rather win little by little and increase their chances of winning. Whereas those that had an external locus of control loved those riskier things and would constantly bet on that and engage in gambler's fallacy, 
You know, that feeling when the six hasn't come in roulette for the past 40 turns. So it's time that the six is going to be here. But rotter studies don't just have to do with who we blame or what you're going to gamble on the next time you're in Vegas. Rotter also found that those that had an internal locus of control found that their successes were set, achieved, and furthered because they knew that their achievements would lead to their successes over those that had an external locus of control who just thought that whatever they did in life, they were just following a destiny's fate. But this leads me to the three things that Water found influenced why someone would have an internal or external locus of control. Cultural differences, socioeconomic differences, and variations in parenting style. We'll look at the latter two since they're the ones that I understand. Rotter found that those that, had, that those that were from a lower socioeconomic class tended to think that the hardships that they faced in life were because of external forces, such as those in authority. And they carried this throughout life and applied that same hate to everything else, usually luck. On the other hand, if you were from a higher socioeconomic class, you thought that everything that you did was a byproduct of your skills and achievements. So you were a more internal locus of control believer. You knew that whatever you did resulted in success. This leads me to parenting style. I want everyone to remember how they were raised. If your parents gave you inconsistent rewards and punishments, meaning if you got an A on a math test, you got an ice cream sandwich, when you got an A on a chemistry test, you got nothing. Then you're probably an external locus of control person because you just thought that that ice cream sandwich was just because of luck. You didn't think that your A on the test ever got you that ice cream sandwich. On the other hand, if your parents were consistent in giving you rewards and punishments, meaning an A on a test got you an ice cream sandwich and an A on a chemistry test, got you an ice cream sandwich, then you were probably an internal locus of control believer because you knew that your achievements would get you something. My parents had the same approach, just on a different scale. An A on a math test would get a verbal good job. A five on the AP chemistry exam would get, a, would get dinner at a fancy restaurant. If you dig deeper into your parenting styles and how you were raised, you're likely to find whether you're more an internal or external locus of control person. So what now? We're faced with these situations every single day. Who to blame? My friends or myself? But this isn't just some black or white concept. We experience both internal and external locus of control. We've created these boxes and we step outside, but it's time that we stepped back inside. I'm not saying everything is in our control. No, some things are just utterly out of our control. But most of the time, everything happens for a reason. And that reason is usually inside of the box. If I had taken Claritin or Dayquil, I would have been fine. Realize that sometimes being an internal locus of control allows you to find your mistakes and grow as a person so you can find innovative solutions in daily life. Thank you.